herzlich willkommen bei diesem Gespräch mit vier SchauspielerInnen von Act Out. Es ist der letzte Tag von Pox in Love Queer Week 2021. Wir freuen uns sehr, mit diesem tollen Cast und äh, diesem Teilcast sozusagen unseres Films hier zu sitzen. Ich stelle die Leute ganz kurz vor. Mehr biografische Details bietet das Internet oder die Leute selbst, wenn ihr sie auf der Straße antrefft und in ein schönes Gespräch verwickelt. Ich fange direkt bei meiner Rechten an. Elena Schmidt, Schauspielerin am Maxim-Gorki-Theater im Ensemble gerade. Marzen al -Jube, zu diagonal rechts von mir, Schauspieler am Maxim-Gorki-Theater im Ensemble. Auf der anderen Seite diagonal von mir, Julius, Julius Feldmeier, jetzt habe ich den Namen nicht hingekriegt. Und ähm, Julius ist auch Schauspieler und zu meiner Linken, Knut Berger, Schauspieler, oft am Maxim-Gorki-Theater. Und alle vier sind Teil von Act Out einer großen Kampagne, die mit einem äh, großen Artikel im Magazin der Süddeutschen Zeitung aufgeschlagen ist und angekommen ist und ganz viele queere SchauspielerInnen vereinigt hat, zusammengebracht hat, beziehungsweise sie haben sich selbst damit zusammengebracht. Und ich würde mit der ersten Frage direkt mich an Elena richten und über Act Out bzw. Coming Out und Queer Awakening sprechen wollen. Weil das eine ist an ein Publikum gerichtet, sei es der Familienfreundinnenkreis oder eine Öffentlichkeit. Und die andere Frage stellt sich natürlich auch in Bezug auf sich selbst, auf ein Kennenlernen der eigenen Queerness, auf ein Entdecken der eigenen Queerness. Und ich wollte dich fragen, wie das für dich zusammenhängt, bei dieser Kampagne, aber auch im täglichen Leben und Umgang damit. Ähm, ja, also für mich persönlich hat es ziemlich lange gebraucht, bis mich diese Themen überhaupt interessiert haben. Also sowohl Outing als auch äh, Sichtbarkeit, äh, queere Sichtbarkeit, ähm, würde ich jetzt auch nicht sagen, dass das so meine Lieblingsthemen sind oder die mich brennend interessieren, weil ich für mich eigentlich kein Problem mit meiner sexuellen Orientierung oder meiner sexuellen Identität habe. Ähm, dennoch wurde dieses Thema sehr früh an mich herangetragen, meist ähm, gewaltvoll und von außen, ähm, eigentlich so lange, seit ich mich erinnern kann. <lacht> Und ja, da habe ich schon sehr früh gemerkt, dass diese Gesellschaft, in der ich lebe, ähm, weit ab davon ist, dass ich mich mit, einem, mit einer Selbstverständlichkeit, äh, mit meinem queeren Körper ähm, durch die Welt bewegen kann. Also ich bin in Österreich aufgewachsen, ähm, lebe jetzt seit vielen Jahren in Deutschland ähm, und kann eigentlich relativ offen queer leben. Das ist ein Privileg, das die meisten Menschen auf diesem Planeten nicht haben. Und der Fakt, dass ich das kann, ähm, verdanke ich auf jeden Fall vielen Menschen, die vor uns gelebt haben, die über viele Jahrzehnte gearbeitet und gekämpft haben, um sich für ähm, queere Rechte einzusetzen. Also die haben für dieses Privileg, das ich jetzt lebe, gekämpft. Und ähm, für mich geht, gehen Privilegien immer damit einher, sich für diejenigen einzusetzen, die diese Privilegien nicht haben. Und in diesem Sinne finde ich es super wichtig wiederum, ähm, ähm, Outing und queere Sichtbarkeit ähm, zu leben und zu, ich übersetze das jetzt mal ganz frei ins Deutsche, zu umarmen <lacht> ähm, und ja, in diesem Sinne 
ähm, einen Wandel Schritt für Schritt langsam ähm, vonstatten gehen zu lassen, dass es so eine Gewöhnung der Gesellschaft ähm, gibt. Genau. Ja. Yeah. I just realized that we wanted to talk in English on this panel and one of the privileges of speaking both languages might be um, to not realize when you're talking in the lo wrong language, but I'm now switching to English and I hope that you can all follow. Um, and maybe like um, switch over to another question of privileges and discrimination and exclusion. Um, I think, Mazen, um, you are like all of us on many levels. Um, you can be discriminated. I don't know how it is in the daily life. But um, living in Berlin, um, living in Germany, there is the topic of Arabic interpreted people um, or assumed people. Um, and then you have the layer of queerness that can be read on you, that you also act uh, like you're also present with act out to the audience, but also um, behaving like a queer person can like trigger some actions from other people. And I wanted to talk to you or ask you about like how those layers intersect each other, how maybe there is also something of like a possibility of jumping from one to the other, if that helps, or if, if it just makes everything worse. Okay, hello, first of all. Um, yeah, it's um, it's not easy to, or maybe it will be long to explain, but I will try to make it uh, shorter. Uh, like, um, I grew up in uh, Saudi Arabia as a Syrian. Uh, 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 person, uh, I stayed there till uh, uh, age eight, eight years, uh, because of my father working. Then we moved to Syria. Uh, like there, it's really different. Like um, uh, I had many experience before. I would say I was I started in Syria, uh, uh, and there to to show yourself or to be like I. <laughs> Like I think most of the time, or a lot of of moments, I got to be to called uh, weirdo or strange with how I look, uh, with how I dress, uh, which I don't see it like this at all. And uh, for sure, it started from the family, uh, like uh, yeah, to have long hair and no hair in the face and piercing. Mm, you look like girl, and it's not good. And I every time see it so good <laughs> uh, um, uh, to look like girl or look like a man or like between. And I think, I think really, I feel sometimes I have like really society inside me. I'm I'm not just one. This it's not kind of sickness. It's uh, I think it's healthy. Like um, yeah, uh, also we learn and we change. Um, Like, uh, to be honest, yeah, I cannot speak about myself there uh, openly. Uh, not everyone will accept me. Some people, which they are in my circle, my friends, uh, like to be queer there or, 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 or to try to dress for them not normal or look not normal. It really will cost you problems, uh, big problems, I would say. Uh, And if we speak here about Berlin, like uh, I think I still am I'm, I'm myself, Mazen, the same one. But uh, still, but I can have more freedom, show myself more. Doesn't mean this I uh, I feel totally safe here. Also, no, also not. Uh, uh, the, yeah, and. Uh, And yeah, I I I, uh, I heard about Act Out from uh, from my friend, close friend Nils Bormann. Uh, he explained to me everything and told me, and I say, yeah, for sure, I want to be part uh, because 
in the normal daily life, like I don't speak so much about my private, could be life, or how I feel, or what I want, or my needs. Uh, and I think it's huge and big step, and it's funny thing, I think maybe I'm the only Arab uh, guy in the act out. And um, uh, the sad thing that it's really a lot of queer uh, uh, Arab people, they exist here, they exist in Syria or in Saudi Arabia, but they cannot show themselves or be free or speak about it also. Uh, and yeah, I think like uh, some of my friends there, uh, I send it to them, I explain what this, uh, some of my friends, they are really proud and happy about this. Uh, for sure, also I had something weird in, in Facebook where I shared some stuff, like I think I told you, Yunus, in private, uh, that someone write me a comment, uh, because I, I, I know I was, I was actually with the dress, uh, and someone uh, write me a comment, if I can make pasta, but in uh, in a female way, like if if, uh, if uh, a, w a housewoman, you know, in a, in a really disgusting way, I would say. And for sure, my reaction was nothing, just a block, uh, because yeah, uh, I cannot uh, speak with. I I don't know, like I I cannot give education now to people. I try sometimes, like not to give and be a teacher, but uh, to speak at least. Uh, that yeah, we have sometimes different op opinion, and it's good sometimes to agree that we don't agree on some stuff. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I can speak forever, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Maybe then I. Um, uh, take but I don't know if if you got uh, answer from me or imagination, and also yeah, also um, uh, yeah. I think I think this is what. All what I have. Uh, if you have any question, you can also. Yeah, maybe I just uh, step in and go from like this question of um, educating other people yeah. and um, learning oneself. Um, and I turn to Knut, and um, there has been a big development, um, for example, in two pieces uh, here in Goriki where you worked with Falk Richter um, with one piece um, that was pretty clearly um, dealing with gayness and cis male gayness um, and other pieces that develop more to understanding or researching queerness. And um, I wanted to ask you, like, um, Act Out is a queer, I think, um, also very diverse in ethnicity um, movement or group, um, how that is for you, like this development, um, also topic-wise, also in society, in, in discourse? Mm, I think it's, it's huge. I think it's, it's the, the core of this subject, because that's what, what changed to me. You can actually, it's, it's quite a good example, the, the, the two pieces that you mentioned, um, that like also in my life, just when when you Elena said before, um, my queer body, I realized that there was a time that I didn't have a queer body. I had a, a gay male body. And I think this idea also of like coming together of, I just, on my way here, I saw a, a poster for an, an art exhibition that is called um, Diversity United. And this is very much how it feels to me. This idea of, uh, what's the word in English? Unification of like uniting, to be united in, in the differences. And there was a time, and I, I, looking back at, um, what's it called, um, small town boy. Um, there was a time also in my life when it was about um, being gay. And yeah, it was, it was also a, a good cause, it was fine, but it's, it feels very, very different now 
to be united, to like learn from other people, to 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 be a part of a bigger group. Also, the whole subject of um, what in I guess in, not only in Germany, but uh, you call it um, um, identity politics. Um, which we also in ACT OUT had a, a, a huge discussion uh, because we were like attacked for being uh, that what we are doing is uh, identity politic, politics. And um, I have the feeling that this is the, the, the most import, important change, that something that is diverse can not be identity politic. Politics. I don't know how to say it. Identitätspolitik. Um, because you fight for a bigger cause. You, you unify yourself with other people. And this feels so much better. And this feels so much, uh, yeah, more mature, more like it, it, it's, it's such a, it's a so much better cause than to always deal with your own shit. But to be able to, uh, yeah, to to also it makes you so much stronger, I think, and so this is something that that makes me so happy to to be part of ACTOT because that's what we are doing. It's not like this, like a, a group of gay men, or like a, a, whatever. Like it's, it's not like sectionalized. It's like a bigger thing, and that is, in a way, even mind blowing for me. Uh, to to deal with these things, and I learn so much, and I also make so much mistakes. But I <laughs> learn and learn, and that's a, that's a very good thing. And that's also something uh, that I I think you can you can maybe here and there see already happening in the society we live in that there's a that there's a change, and that's something that didn't work like in in the beginning of the 90s now starts to be something completely different, and that's. It's very. It feels very good to be part, uh, to be part of this. Maybe we then also turn to Julius and include him in the discussion. Um, you are also part of Act Out, and you are married in a heterosexual relationship, which I only learned after meeting you as a very queer person. And um, I wanted to ask you, like, what your relation is to the Act Out movement or the group, and what this, what does uh, that means for you like to be in this two sections, but maybe also your r uh, relationship uh, that is read from outside as a heterosexual marriage is a very queer marriage. I don't know, but maybe you can say something about that. Yeah, for sure I can, um, because actually a lot about what, um, what, people see from the outside and what it actually means from the inside. So for me, I, I haven't been a queer person my whole life, but I've always been told, oh, you, are, uh, you look like a girl or you have such an uh, androgynous body. So I actually found beautiful what Elena said, uh, the queer body. Uh, uh, this also just really moved me because I can totally relate to that. Uh, I'm in my mid-30s now and I still have like a very young looking and still androgynous body and face and actually I'm really happy with that. I, like, I, I was always happy with that except if people like, uh, like uh, insult me because of it. Um, so uh, me and my partner we both identify as queer, like we have a different um, like our relationship is evolving constantly and we're looking for models like to um, make each other happy and like everybody can be their own like um, creator of their lives so we see other people we try to learn we it's it's like a, it's an evolving thing and um, when I heard about act out um, I heard about it through the Queer Media Society newsletter, which is like a society, I think it was founded two, three years ago, um, to um, like impose more queer visibility in politics, media, newspapers, etc. So, and I really wanted to be an ally because I thought it's, it's a good cause. Uh, like we we need to have more queer visibility. So I, I heard about Act Out and I thought I want like I, how can I support this? I read what uh, Godehard and Karin read in their first um, initial email and I thought I, I how can I support it? 
and I realized like I cannot be an ally and you cannot I don't want to be like an uh, online activist about something that has nothing to do with me like I really have to ask my question am I would it make sense for me to be part of act out and what would it mean so I'm in this heterosexual supposedly um, relationship what does it mean well it does mean that actually people can see that the relationship is more than that it's not just a man and a woman and that's it so because that's not our reality so if I'm at a party and I make out with a guy or a person from another gender it's not just a joke no it means something and it always did means something and um, second question for me was am I taking somebody else's space which would be really like I thought would be really harmful and I absolutely do not want that because like uh, Elena said there has been a fight and people are still fighting and I talked to Godehard a lot about it and um, while doing that I realized this is really about the spectrum and the queer uh, universe that we should be living in and that there's a like there's a spot from for me on that um, spectrum and uh, it makes a lot of sense to be coming out for me as a bi, poly or queer person because it's not seen so much or it's not visible and so also I can be um, visible on the, I don't know, like a identification person to somebody who feels the same way um, and on our way to, I don't know, some future where there need no nobody needs to have a coming out like this is also something that like has been said to me why do you have to have a coming out you have no problems you have all the privileges well on our way to nobody having to have a coming out my coming out is a little step on the way i think because it opens the spectrum and makes clear that like what you um, project on people is not their reality so yeah this is like how I got into that. I hope this makes sense a little bit, yeah. It does make a lot of sense. Uh, Knut, I just saw in the <laughs> edge of my eyesight that you grabbed your mic. Did you want to uh, add something? No, it it's good to hold it in my hand. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you just hold it, like all right. <laughs> <clears throat> then maybe I uh, open to a broader discussion um, between all of us. Um, we met in a production team that was consisting of mostly queer people um, for when we did uh, this production, Dark Room Revisited. Um, and you for sure all have been working as actri actors um, also in mostly uh, hetero or cis-dominated um, productions. And I wanted to ask all of you um, what the difference is and um, where that can lead also to, um, like, because I think there is a, also a political question of it. Like, there is the production side, what does it mean for the work? But there is also the question of, again, the education. Do we educate other people um, while we are there? But what kind of work does that then mean? And, yeah. um, I, just, I just realized that, that there are two things. One is the, like, the characters. And, and the other is just the, the work environment. And I realized also through ACT OUT that things are starting to change. For example, I, I just met a couple of days ago on a, on a film set, uh, Benny. And um, Benny is, uh, is, is an actor that I worked with before. And um, uh, the movie is called uh, Futur 3. And we had this like hardcore uh, sex scene, uh, like really um, uh, explicit and, and, and really wild. And so, but this was like a, a, a TV situation of like, uh, it, it was even like, a, a, so we both are uh, doctors in this uh, production um, in, a, in a hospital. And so they, they, they decided that they want to have a, for a complicated scene that was the first scene to be shot in the movie, uh, they wanted a rehearsal. And at least I didn't know that Benny uh, was part of the cast. So we, then they, they, the, the people were mostly staying in a hotel, in, in like somewhere in Kudam, 
and then they brought us there to do the rehearsal, <laughs> and then we met there. And I didn't know that I would meet him there, and uh, I didn't expect him to be there. And then it was such a relief, and I, I'm, I'm really sure that it wasn't just a relief for us, it was uh, such a relief for the whole group of people that got there together, okay, so... The director said, we have to rehearse this because it's a very complicated scene, like all the doctors from the hospital and the nurses, they will be there together in this discussion, so we have to rehearse this. And then we ended up going like, oh my God, what are you doing here? You guys, the last thing that we did together was like fucking hardcore in a, in a scene in another movie. And uh, I like licked him for uh, <laughs> like this. And, and, and we realized that it wasn't not only for us, but it was also so helpful for the whole team to be like, yeah, to to that's what I what 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 I realized so much in in in, in my work that it's it's the this this moment of deciding not to talk, of of deciding to be quiet because it might be like like every time I'm I'm being picked up to to shoot. And uh, sometimes they put like more than, than one actor or actress in a car. And then you, you sit there and then it starts like, usually it's very early in the morning and then they go like, yesterday my girlfriend, la 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 la. And I realized that for so many years, I would go like, ah, hmm, okay. Instead of saying, well, my boyfriend this morning and 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 that's why it, it felt like such a, uh, yeah, such a relief to be there with Benny and be open about it. And, and, and the thing was, we couldn't also, like even if we wanted to, because uh, he was already talking with another actress about the movie that is so amazing, and it is an amazing movie. And so he, he was, pr uh, and he is proud of it, and he should be. And so he wanted to talk about it. And then I appeared, and I was like the, the big fuck date <laughs> that he had. And then we had to share this, and it was such a, it was really helpful. For, for the whole thing, and, and maybe not only for us. So I, I think things are changing. Does anyone want to jump in or have another? I thing? could jump in. Yeah, please. For, for me, it's very liberating to work with queer people. Um, it's be, because there's less, less decisions have been made before you start working. It's, more, it's a more open space. You know what I mean? It's not. I don't have to like worry uh, how I'm gonna look in a certain costume, or if uh, some director or costume designer is weirdly gonna comment on that. So uh, I can feel much more safe, uh, and b because everybody who's in the room is um, automatically much more accepted. So I'm not saying like every gay, lesbian, queer person, whatever, is like the best person in the world, but there, because of everybody's journey, there is a mutual understanding about what it means to be oneself and standing up for that. And um, like, I had a theater production in 2016 when like there was, um, <laughs> a friend of mine would say at this time, um, he, could not one, he could not see one gay bone in me. So, but I was in a theater production with a gay director and um, um, a gay uh, fellow actor and a lesbian actress and a very like intelligent feminist um, actress. And like the, I was the only cis male hetero person in the, in the whole production. And it, it just felt really uh, beautiful, like not being the only cis male hetero person, but being surrounded by by these like intelligent people who had to like start dealing with shit and like and be open about themselves and invite you to also be open about yourself and uh, it's just really liberating and helpful to like grow as a person and learn um, so yeah for me it's a it's a very beautiful thing maybe we bring the term of the hetero craziness <laughs> to, into this talk because it was something yeah. we talked about often in our production day. Yeah, I created weeks ago this term uh, Hetenbahn uh, in which we are living um, because it's really 
kind of insanity uh, this uh, heteronormative world uh, which has so much influence on our daily lives um, in private but also uh, of course uh, at work uh, even more so um, for me it was um, years ago it was I think in 2010 um, I have had my first uh, queer production and I wasn't aware of it, uh, but after a few days of rehearsing, I was thinking something is different, something... And then, then I realized that uh, 80 to 90 percent of the people were gay. Um, and then I thought about it and uh, it, make, it made totally sense for me because... Uh, until then, I was surrounded by uh, this hidden van, and what it makes uh, for me is I have I the outside is um, othering me all the time. I have to justify myself, I have to explain myself, I have to explain the queer world as if I am the queer world, or I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I liked a lot what Knut was saying about uh, this diversity and that, that uh, the um, uh, unification of this uh, diverse people, group of people, um, makes impossible to speak about identity politics. Um, so it's a really strange role. It's a kind of a talk. Yeah, I am a token all the time. So if I'm in a queer production, there is a lot of work I don't have to do. Uh, and I can focus on my work more and I just said when uh, we arrived all here and after five minutes uh, I said it's so cute how cute we uh, <laughs> uh, see each other because we were so happy about uh, our, uh, our dresses, about our styles uh, and so on and so forth. And yeah, for me it's uh, much more relaxing and more easy. Um, I realize ah, no, I want yeah. to say add something more because um, also uh, in uh, uh, Knut said, uh, spoke about the figures, and that's also something which is very interesting and important for me to have other kind of of roles in uh, in on stage and in movies. Um, yeah, to make. Uh, explore and show um, alternatives to the heat and van and the uh, dominant society, yeah. yeah. Mazen? And, uh, I, I support um, Elena idea and um, I was so close to speak about this. I, want, I, I have a hope or wish um, uh, uh, that as a uh, queer actor or actress, uh, it's no problem for me. Uh, we really can play any kind of role. First of all, what we learned uh, as an actor or actress uh, to do any role, and this also uh, also this this coming from what I said before, like I have society inside me, and this why why I chose to be an actor also because I want to be a lot. Uh, and do a lot of things, and we learn to make research also, and have education if we don't know about something, uh, how how to manage it and do it, and be professional and perfect about it. My wish, like for for, I don't know if I have to say the directors, or the decision maker, <laughs> uh, to don't label and put actors and actors in boxes. Uh, and see them just in one corner in, or in one side. Uh, as an actor or actress and also plus queer, uh, you, you know, like to be just like this. No, we can, we can, we can, do, we can do a lot. And, uh, and I think uh, uh, like 
Some directors um, really they saw you in just one uh, character or or way to play. Uh, some of them they don't know you and they don't spoke already with you to get to know you also and see like what I can do with this actor or actress because like we have the talent, we, we have education, we have uh, experience. Um, I think, yeah, this will be my wish for the decision makers <laughs> or the directors, um, uh, yeah, to, to really speak uh, with us, especially if they don't know us or they don't saw us in the stage, because I think some directors, they don't show you already as an actor if they don't saw you, uh, or yeah, they saw you just in one thing and this you. Thank you all so much. We're already running out of time. Um, it's, today is the last day of Pox in Love Queer Week 2021. We still have program going on. We will have the production Strings Attached by Jill Treyer. And we will have a distant disco um, tonight with Hyenas and Reverso. And we really hope that you enjoyed the Queer Week until now, that you enjoyed until the, the end. And to see you very soon in person, in life, and in the garden, in Gorky, or wherever we meet. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>